Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I wrote a tool, and it's called CYBS, rather to help you understand what's running there and and where and who called it in. This is a cross distribution uh, system. What we're trying to do is to make it run on Debian and Deb One, Fedora and Arch. I've also tested it on Pop OS. I haven't tested on all the uh, Linux distros yet, so I'm really looking for some help. Uh, if, if you want to test it on your favorite distro I would and let me know your feedback, I would appreciate it. All it does is just inform you of what's going on with your system and, and what's going on beneath the surface. There are other lots of tools that do this. None of them go as deep as they need to go for today's operating environments. This is, the, uh, this is my system uh, for CYBS. It has a number of parts. The uh, first place to start with this would be to start with config sh. Now, this is just going to look at your system and, and, and tell you if you've got all the pieces you need at a minimum. Now, there's some things that are missing in here. I plan to add them. Uh, this is for an older version of the tool, and I haven't gone back and added the new stuff yet. So, yeah, you'll notice that things like Swift is not in here and some others. But don't worry, I'll be adding those. Um, once you're certain that everything is good to go, uh, then the next thing would be to do would be the... And it's got the sudo built into it. So it, it will bring down, if there is any changes to the vulnerability database, that's just CVE vulnerability database. And then it will uh, download uh, e Gripe or, and or Swift, hopefully at the same time. Second thing is when you've done all that, you're ready to actually run the tool. Now, the first one I'm going to show you is... This is actually incorporated into version 2. Version 2 is not posted yet. So this is the one that's posted. So it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start a vulnerability scan. So, okay. So test 1. This one is looking at the C group verification. So, yeah, C group version 2. This is a Ubuntu 25.10. Uh, and it shows you that, yep, you've got C group version 2 on. And... This is your Spectre meltdown mitigations. So we have, this is in place and it is, your system is affected. This one is not affected. That's not affected, not affected, not affected, not affected, affect, not affected. This one is, you need the microcode. So this is telling me I need to install the Intel or the AMD microcode. Uh, this is not affected, not affected, and so forth. This one, this one was disabled by PRCTL. Not affected, not affected, not affected. So none of those are affected. But third test is the kernel. This is, so you have things that are doing, see like this, you have stuff working in the background that is telling you that it's off. But anyway, so that's, I didn't set those. Those were default. It's coming out of the box from Ubuntu that way. System D analyze. This is looking at uh, the analysis of the services that are on the system. Test five is the kernel version and CBE review. Now, right now, all I'm going to look at is is just uh, the kernel version itself. So this is six seventeen dot zero dash five generic. No changes since the release. That's the one it came with. Uh, and then I'm incorrectly, because it shouldn't be looking at RPM, so this is my bug. I need to fix that. And then security tools audit, which ones are installed. Again, same problem here. Uh, kernel BPF config, um, falling back to the boot config. This you cannot change. Not, not anymore. Not since system D257 went up. Uh, it doesn't, it, yeah, you can't turn it off anymore. It's mandatory on. If you go in and set uh, config BPF to no, 
BPF syscall to know, BPF JIT to know, set in, all of those to know. Yeah, not, it'll all come back on before the the compile finishes. To yeah, so it's allowing it to run. So why does it need to run? And here's the reason right now. These are these are active BPF programs that are currently running on my system. So I have a C group device. Uh, this is an SD device that's running here. This one is FD firewall egress. So this is uh, this is a firewall component that's installed in my kernel that is controlling what goes out of my system. This one is a ingress, which is controlling what, what is being allowed into my system. This is a name. Uh, this namespace is that. This one is another devices tag, GPL. This is another device, another device. This is a SKB. That's another egress, ingress. And then we list attached BPF C groups and net filters. Currently, we have some net filters for XDP, TC, flow dissector, uh, net filter, XDP programs. Uh, so now we're I'm passing apparently the wrong usage. BPF is one of those tools that actively evolves. Test 10, this is the root, can, uh, root scan. Yeah, the check root kit's not there, so it bypassed it. So then uh, we have test 11, another eBPF maps. These are the memory locks. So it's protecting some memory. System D services bound to BPF in test 17, 12, nothing. Audit demons, this is audit D. Uh, it's enabled, it's running. Uh, and it is running with a set of rules. Now, if you, Ubuntu, their, uh, the audit D does not come with any rules on what you want it to look at. So uh, I kind of threw together something for this, just for this test, that might give you kind of a basic set that you can start with to uh, modify it the way you want and have it look at things that you want to have it look at. These are basically just watching for, you can have it look for changes, you can have it look like this is looking for writes on any of those files or appends. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look for reads, but yeah, it's looking for writes. So it's looking for any changes or modifications to, did somebody add a password? Did someone add the, you know, the test 14, it lists the kernel modules related to security. We don't have any. Uh, 15 CVE tracker. This is uh, uh, another utility called CVE checker that's normally found on Fedora. So I can install it, uh, but you'll notice again, <laughs> this is, yeah, sorry about that, my bad. Uh, and then it's going to look at, this is just running uh, Gripe by itself, going all the way through the file system. So this one doesn't construct a, a, a system's bill of materials. It just simply calculates how many you have. So 192, we have 1,085 high, 2,985 medium, 664 low, 126 neg negligible, and zero uh, unknown. And there's your detail. Everything you want to know about it. When the what is the what is the package that or the file that has got a CVE against it? When was that open? These are new. So I think I think <laughs> I think you can see that this is kind of an important thing to have. Would this change my my stance on a distribution? It depends. Uh, I remember this one's new. It's bound to trigger all kinds of security people to come and look at it, and so there they there might be just busy opening up a bunch of them. Uh, Ubuntu usually is pretty quick about patching stuff out, but they may this may be coming also from the Debian repository. So, but I don't see these same errors in Debian. So Debian's counts are lower. So this must be and remember Ubuntu keeps their own repos. 
would this change my my stance on a recommendation? If if I was confident that you know the 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 criticals and the highs are being addressed, that wouldn't concern me too much. With that, that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon, and bye for now.